Okay, so we have a new version of Android for Raspberry Pi 4, and this is by a company called Mterrier. And for the first time, an Android operating system is available through Raspberry Pi Imager, so you can just download and install it through Imager. Now, for a very long time, I've used Consta Kang's images, and these are AOSP Android, or in this case, Lineage OS, which is based on Android 13, which is excellent, really, really good hardware support. But let's first concentrate on this one from M Terrier. Now it did have a little struggle um, after installing it. Well, actually you have to register to be able to get a code to be able to activate the operating system, which is something that I wasn't used to with Android on Raspberry Pi. But uh, that was pretty straightforward and works fine and it is free. And this is the email I got back from M Terrier. Get started with your free start plan, hi Lee. Congratulations, your registration is complete. Redeem the voucher code below to get your free plan with included over-the-air Android updates, mobile device management to control your devices remotely. So all of that went smoothly, no problem with that. But I did struggle to um, install separate apps on there that I wanted. Now it does come with an app installer. I can't remember if it came with a browser. Well, I'll do a clean install of this to show it from the beginning. Um, but uh, yeah, nice name. Uh, there are loads of what I would say was probably open source apps on here. Loads of things you won't recognize. I'm pretty sure VLC wasn't in there, but VLC is in there now. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of the things I was searching for just, just weren't coming up. I eventually installed, I'm pretty sure, this browser and uh, the Material Files app and managed to install uh, the Aptide Store and APK Pure. And I think I downloaded some apps directly from websites. So if I scroll up, you can see I've got some video apps on here, BBC iPlayer, uh, which I couldn't get to work, it crashes. Uh, ITVX, which also had some sort of issue, uh, so won't run without the Google Play. Well, that would be the same with Consta Kang's image, but you can install Google Play Store on Consta Kang's image. You may be able to on this as well, I haven't tried yet. That's not really a problem with the operating system, that's just because it hasn't got the Play Store, which is fair enough. So Amazon Prime is working, it looks like, and uh, if I start to play a bit of a program, let's just see if it is gonna stream. Is it gonna play the actual program? Yeah, that looks to be playing. I'm not gonna keep that playing, obviously. I don't want any copyright strikes. So if I press the home button to go back, so what I was going to do was a Geekbench test uh, to see how well this performs. So let's close down all these apps that I've opened and run, well, let's run Ada64 first, just to show you what we're working with. So system, Raspberry Pi 4, this is my 8 gig Pi 4, Bluetooth version 4. If we go to the CPU, you can see it's running at stock speeds. I'm running this from an SD card. I haven't tried to run it from USB. With the ConstaKang version, you need to make a change to the config.txt to be able to run from USB. But I've got that in all my videos. So GPU render V3D 4.2, OpenGL ES 3.1. And does it tell us the temperature? It does, all that's working. Uh, so we close that down. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, let's properly close that down and run Geekbench with nothing else running. So we've got a CPU or a GPU benchmark. It does mention Vulkan, which is promising, uh, but we'll see. Uh, so Android 13 on Raspberry Pi 4 runs CPU benchmark. I'll come back when this is all done. So the CPU benchmark result on this N Terrier image is 234 on the single core speed and 538 on the multi-core. You can see all the tests that it's gone through and go to GPU and run the GPU benchmark as well. which appears to have crashed out. Yeah, okay, so no GPU benchmark score. I suppose we can give it one more try uh, because it happened really quickly. Running background blur. Okay, didn't like background blur. So whilst I'm downloading Geekbench on the Consta Kang image, let's go into Mteria settings, which is uh, separate to this OS. So screen orientation, we can uh, rotate the screen. That's good for using on a tablet. Uh, keep awake, screen will never sleep while charging. That will be handy, I should have left that on earlier on. Kiosk and auto start setting. Oh, so there's kiosk modes in there. I think it probably is geared to commercial use in some way. Uh, just looking at, looking through it. So Ethernet settings, ADB over in Ethernet, device management, 
device is activated you can see this is version 13.4 and also we have some Raspberry Pi settings as well so if we go back uh, there you go and uh, we've got audio output which is nice to see supported resolutions 19 supported resolutions from right down to 640 by 480 so if you're running games then running a low resolution on your desktop especially on old games tends to run much better I'm currently running at 1080 60 so we've got the temperature in here as well so let's shut this down and I'll boot up the Consta Kang image on this same Pi okay so single core score is 236 whereas it was 234 on the M Terrier image and multi-core we've got 553 uh, which is better than the 538 on the M Terrier image so not a massive improvement but better let's have a look at the GPU so if we do compute and GPU compute benchmark and let's see if this crashes out ah, it does the same as the M Terrier image okay so slightly better performance but not massively different although I do find that installing and permissions and various other things tend to work better in this version of Lineage OS uh, so if I was going to choose to use a system I would use this but let's show how to install the M Terrier image and also how to start installing apps on it because I've already done loads of videos on Consta Kang's versions so let's shut this down okay so first up let's launch Imager and choose OS and freemium and paid for OS Android by M Terrier. Actually, there's a little information here. Can we click on that? Oh, and that launches the page. Just three steps to deploy and manage your Android devices. Create an account and receive a free starter plan for your first three devices. Install M Terrier OS on your devices using the M Terrier installer. Onboard your devices to the M Terrier device hub and manage them remotely. So let's choose storage. I'm going to write it on the SD card that I was using just now. Let's pop that in and click on that and write and yes and what it's writing it's worth looking at the M Terrier website because it clearly is more about as you can see here kiosk solutions point of sale systems It's more about commercial use and being able to control it remotely could be very very useful and looks like there's various different partners that they work with and at the top Raspberry Pi Imogen now supports Android 13 for Raspberry Pi 4B so we're nearly done writing it's just got to verify the image okay so that's finished writing let's see what happens on a first time boot so switch on and it's launching with the M Terrier logo and just rebooted and we've got please wait waiting for the system to get ready so if we hit next UK we can set our time zone all the usual setups so I've got an Ethernet plugged in uh, here we go M Terrier OS is not activated so you can use it in evaluation mode, but I'm going to hit activate. Okay, it doesn't like my previous activation code uh, that I used before. So let's go back and try it again. Okay, luckily I had the password saved on my iPad. The following activation code was detected automatically. Please make sure it's correct before proceeding with device activation. I'm just going to go with that. M Terrier OS is now activated. So I'm just going to go next and accept the license and reboot so this is what happens after a restart you can see I've got those M Terrier settings that I went through earlier on uh, this is the App Store and uh, I don't think there's a browser or a file manager on here as standard I don't know what Bromite is Bromite is Chromium Plus Ad Blocking oh okay so let's go back from that Clock Contacts M Terrier Kiosk M Terrier License M Terrier MDM so there's a file manager here, but I couldn't get that to install apps. Yeah, so I went for F-Droid, which was the App Store. So let's say don't allow to notifications. And this takes a while first time. And I just did a search for browser. And you can see here various things come up, but full Garus is the one I installed before. So we can hit install. And you need to allow unknown apps. So go to settings, switch that on, and hit install. And then I went to the file manager, 
and the one I installed was called Material Files. So let's just do a search for files. And you can see there's loads in here. And there's Material Files. And Install. And we don't get that message because we've already allowed this store to download apps. Right, so Material Files is on there and the browser. Now if I go to the browser, and just do a search for, I'm going to do Aptide, but you could just look for any APK you wanted to install and accept the license. Click on the Aptide store and you're looking for the download of the Aptide app. You can see it's just popped up here. So let's click on that oh, and agree to this. You don't have to use the Aptide store. You can use something else if you want, but it just gives you more games and apps. Again, this is probably more for personal use as opposed to commercial use. You probably don't need to do any of this if you're using it for business use. So let's do download. And agree again. Ah, here we are, download. So I don't know if, it's, if it has downloaded. Well, let's try the Material app. So if I go to Home, go to Material Files, We won't allow notifications. We need to manage all files, so we're going to say yes to that. And go back. And is it in the download section already? Yes, there it is. So let's click on that and click on install. And again, we're going to need to allow it. Uh, you only need to do this once. Uh, once you've done it, it will remember the setting. And you can always turn it off if you're worried about security. App installed and open. So again, no thanks to notifications. Let's skip all this. And just click on anything to install. So let's go with apps. Say we wanted something, actually let's search. Say we wanted the Edge browser, just to get something that looks a bit nicer. And here you can see it comes up. I haven't tried it on this. I'm not sure if it will work, but let's give it a go. Install and OK. And allow. It's downloading nice and quick. And we're going to go into settings again. And we'll allow that. And install. And we go back. There you go. So that's ready. So let's hit open and see what happens. OK, definitely a bit slow and a little bit sketchy the way it's flashing up back and forth. <laughs> okay, well, let's not bother with Edge. I'm not sure if I've tried YouTube on this yet. So let's try playing a bit of one of my videos, Lee PSP Video HDR, and see if it copes with that all right. Oh, disappeared. And let's just try that in 1080, because 1080 works absolutely fine in the Consta Kang Android image. Oh, something didn't work. Uh, here we go. So 1080, let's turn on Stats for Nerds and go full screen. Okay, so this browser's not got great video performance in this, uh, but let's not worry about that. Right, so again, it's probably not what you would use this operating system for. I wanted to have a look at the M Terrier, um, the remote access. I guess it's this one. Mtero account is required for remote management. Well, I've got that. Enable MDM service. Current state offline. Online. Okay, so I just try my iPad, I guess. So let's log into my account. So I've just logged into my account and you can see I've got one active subscription, one license, one device online devices this is my raspberry pi so what happens if i click on it system it tells me about it look tells me information i'll have to um, blur some of that out total memory battery level battery voltage network details so i've got more details now summary system hardware networks usb apps usb hub it picks up and you can see the apps that are installed on it. This is quite cool. And we have commands on there as well. 
and it looks like we've got actions here. Now, you can see Aptide is running. I can stop and I can actually delete that. I can enable Bromite, which was the uh, ad blocker. Camera, I haven't got a camera on there at the moment. And it looks like if you use Linux or Windows, there is a way of installing new apps. Download the installer application by choosing the operating system of your PC or laptop. How to installer on Linux. Yeah, this is very impressive. I need to look more at this. So well done to Interia for getting an Android operating system on the Raspberry Pi Imager. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.